it's time for Geocache Talk. Whether you are at work, in the car, or wherever you are, we hope you enjoy this show about the great sport of geocaching. If you are watching live on YouTube, you can be part of the adventure tonight in the chat room and participate with others as they watch the show. If you are listening later, please give it a like and subscribe on your favorite podcasting app so that you can get all of the weekly Geocache Talk goodness. If you have not become a patron of the Geocache Talk Network, what are you waiting for? Patron levels start as low as a bison tube level at $3 a month. To sign up is easy. Simply go to the Geocache Talk website and click on the Become a Patron button or go to patreon.com forward slash geocache talk. Patrons now get the famous blackout coin, invites to special events, and other really great items throughout the year. Become a patron today. Have you subscribed to FTF Magazine yet? FTF Magazine is the number one geocaching magazine available. It is a quarterly magazine that you can be part of. Submit your geocaching milestones and adventures to be published. FTF Magazine is also interactive with puzzles to solve and the hunt to find Spartacus. If you can solve the puzzle or find Spartacus, then you will be entered in to win a special path tag. Every new subscription, you will receive a special swag pack. Subscribing is easy. Just visit FTF's website, ftfgeo.com. Don't miss out and subscribe today. Big thanks to Derek of Baker Six Clan and our featured patrons, Kenny Mason Maddie, Four Lunsfords, RX Wranglers, Railroad, Jokerus, Skippy Teddy 83, and Casper Fly, Retired Guy, Team Murky, 1940 Chevy, Joyful Nomad, and our new patrons, Great Slater, Tag, and the GSDs, the Bryant Boys. Bell on the Move, and Hailmeister. All right. Well, let's just jump right in to show 503 as we welcome to the show Conrad Lau. Welcome, Conrad. Hey, guys. Welcome. Yes. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Um, we'll do some news, and we'll jump uh, right into um, discussing things. So, um, first, let's do a couple items out of the news. So, we have a winner from last week. If you remember during Challenge Talk last week, we were giving away two coins. Uh, one was during the show, and one was emails after the show. And I was very appreciative of the emails that I was able to see of people's memories uh, of, of the geocache talk network. And they were fun to read. And, um, but I turned that all over to the challenge talk crew and they did their randomize and our winner of the geocaching with kids coin, which I think is really cool looking is Matthew Dreyer. So there's your winner. He is our winner. Congratulations, Matthew, for winning that coin. Uh, next in the news, we've got um, the <laughs> labyrinth. We weren't sure what we weren't sure what to call this thing. Maybe somebody in the chat room could give us a distinct they, way. there is a name for it i don't remember what they call it though it's like a campaign Pro souvenir campaign newest promotion promotion something like that anyway just so a new way to get souvenirs that's what's you know leaderboard yeah souvenir challenge thing yeah um yeah signals labyrinth um so have you guys read about it um have you gotten any like Conrad, have you gotten any of their, like you're supposed to win, you're supposed to be able to, to, if you find a cache that has a hidden item in it, have you found a cache with yeah, a hidden more item in it? Yes, I did. And, uh, cool. And I'm not, not so sure why it happened, but it just happened. <laughs> it's that, yeah. yeah. I don't think there's a lot of rhyme or reason to. I think it's who, random, right? The, where the souvenirs yeah. are is random and you don't even know if you're going to get it when, until you get there. Yeah. What do you remember what it was? Do you remember what it, the the item was? No, I can't remember. 
That's yeah, a... you just get a notification and say that oh, you got you got one one item, you get a little bit more points on that. Yeah, but mm -hmm. once you pass okay. that, you can't you can't go back. Take, take a look. I'll be curious to see how people like this one. Um, right. You know, there's always going to be somebody that likes it and somebody that doesn't. And I've seen a little bit online where some people are saying that they went out with their friends cashing, and their friends got like three of the souvenirs, and they kept getting zero. And they're like, it's just right. luck of the draw. They didn't get it. So um, it's, it's very different for whoever you are. Jinx says she's almost through the first labyrinth, whatever that means, because I haven't been able to cash yet uh, since that uh, came out. But Well, there's, um, there's still 56 days left in this first little section. So you've right. got quite a while to, to do it, right? Curious KDB says she's uh, to totally random and she's done. Wow. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, so it's, it's it's like a little role playing game where you can actually see the frog moves as you as you find more caches. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, before we get any further, people are guessing your time. What what time it is, Conrad? So let me. Uh, so people want to know what time is it where Conrad is right now, in. So right <laughs> now I'm in Singapore. So yes. Singapore share the same time zone as Hong Kong and China. Yes, I'm supposed to be at work, but uh, I'm just going to sign in a little bit later. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, Direwolf says it thinks it's 9 a.m. Does that seem right? Yep. Yep, 9 a.m. Yep. We appreciate that. Uh, yeah. That's, and we're, we'll get into... Uh, back when we'll, we'll, Let's... Let's just sort of jump right into that. So mm -hmm. kind, kind of let people know uh, you recently moved. Tell people kind of where you were, where you were living and where you're living now. So I was born in Singapore, so I'm a Singapore citizen. But 12 years ago, uh, we moved to Hong Kong. I stayed there for, for quite a while. My daughter and my son was born there. In fact, my son was, recent, was born recently. And uh, we came back to Singapore just last month uh, for my daughter's education. She's seven this year, starting primary school. She started primary school like uh, about two, three weeks ago. Right. Yeah, that's cool. And um, yeah, uh, Conrad, and I, Conrad and I have been talking back and forth um, a little bit for uh, a, f a few months now. And uh, yeah, um, been able to see some pictures and the family the your your kids are adorable conrad they're thank you they're, they're very cute uh and uh and they, yeah they so. geocaching that much more fun it's so much more fun to take your kids out geocaching than just doing it by that's yourself. right yeah that's right yeah it they yeah they they're just they look like look like they're just they're having a ball i mean i'm sure that you know we've we we've all had kids so we know they're not all that uh, always fun but they seem like they're always having you know always mm -hmm. seem to be in pretty good mood for things so <laughs> up up for adventures um so yeah um so people are we, we have a lot of questions in the chat room please ask your questions and we'll get to them during the show as we go along um so let people kind of know how you got uh, started in the great sport of geocaching and how you how you found out about it. Right. So actually, um, geocaching is a is a game that my wife introduced to me. So when we first moved to Hong Kong, I I hadn't heard of geocaching before. But we were bored during weekends. We didn't have a lot of friends uh, to right. hang out with. So my my wife uh, she remembered like one of her friends told her about geocaching. So. Uh, we just got our first smartphone uh, and we downloaded the app and, and we just tried it out. Cool. Yeah. That that's really cool that you, uh, you know, hats off to the, to the wives <laughs> for <laughs> getting us out there and into the, uh, doing something new. Uh, you know, uh, we, we all, we all come to this game from a little different perspective, you know, of where, you know, where we get started, but it's always interesting to hear how we heard about it, you know, 
and uh, how it got started. I know was 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 it Christy Jesse for you, or was it was it you that heard about it first? Do you think? Um, well, it depends on which first you're talking about. The first first um, was a buddy of mine that I worked with, oh, and okay. then we didn't do it for a couple of years. And then the next time we were uh, we had just moved, just like Conrad just moved. We had just moved to Colorado about 12 years ago. And uh, we remember hearing about it and we were just looking for something to do with our kids. We had little ones at the time and we were looking for mm -hmm. something to do with them. And an article came up and that's how we got into it. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So that the first cash that you found, um, and I'll put it in the chat room so people can kind of look it up as well. But um, how do you... Pro Kulun Park. Is that close to correct? I'm always bad at butchering names. Yeah, Co so it's Kowloon. Kowloon. Kowloon Park. C -O okay. Yeah, C O W. Kowloon Park. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So, what do you remember about that cash, and what what is it about? I mean, what what were your what, what were your what do you remember about that first cash? What what, what comes to mind? Well, so it was at a secluded corner of, of the park. So we live in Jim Sha Chui at that time. Uh, Jim Sha Chui is a very uh, central place in Hong Kong. And there okay. was a big recreation space uh, near our house, just across the road. So it, it's, it's like Central Park in New York. So there was this secluded okay. corner. Um, so using the compass, uh, at that time, geocaching app was still very in the very early stage. It has no compass function. And right. we have to download another uh, compass app on our iPhone. So using the compass, we, we try to look for it where exactly it was. So we right. arrived at this secluded staircase. Uh, and and I think there was a hint. Uh, it says like among the wall. So um, uh, me and my wife was like looking at all parts of the wall, trying to find if if anything that moves. But uh, in the end, she's the one who, who found it. Uh, because she she took out a rock in in the wall and and there it was a small container, <laughs> so <laughs> it's pretty intriguing. You're like, wow, you're like cool, yeah, the, yeah. The, fir the first one, for many, not Jesse, but for many, is kind of that. Wow, that's that's amazing. I mean, that I could take a phone, go to a spot, I actually, you know, mm -hmm. I felt you know still found it. Later on for Jesse, not the first one, but the later on ones. <laughs> well, the, the family wasn't into it on the first one, but when we moved, they were very into it, you know, the second time we went out. So they enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so was, uh, that, was that first find? Is that what got you hooked or did it take a few before you really got hooked to it? Oh, it, it, it took a few. Um, it's when we actually start hiking, uh, because we realized that many of the caches were hidden on the trails in, in, mm -hmm. in Hong Kong. Right. And um, yeah, that, that got me more interested uh, because uh, you, can, you can do two things at once. You can go to, the, you can go, you can go up the mountains, enjoy the beautiful scenery and find caches at the same time. Yeah. Very true. So yeah, that I, was, I, that was many years ago when you started, right? Yeah. Uh, 12 years ago. That was when it was kind of getting, it was a lot less popular. How popular is it now? One of our, uh, they're asking in, in, in Singapore and in Hong Kong, how well known is it? How popular is it around there? I think it's definitely more popular uh, and more, more well known when I first started. Uh, there was a lot of awareness activities, uh, especially in Hong Kong. Um, there, there were a few people from the Scout organization who keep spreading the word. So uh, I guess there was uh, currently there was there was a few scouts who who are very active uh, in this game. Right. Right. And and in Singapore, yeah. uh, during the pandemic, cycling got uh, popular and and this also helps to uh, increase the popular popularity of the game. Right. Yeah. Right. People are looking for things to do, maybe that are not indoors yep. or right. Yeah, so it makes sense. Would you say most people know about it now? It's like pretty common for people to know about geocaching, even if they don't do it. 
I guess so. Like I think uh, out of ten, you get two to three who will say like, "Oh, I have I heard about it, or I'm I I know someone who did it, right? I read about it somewhere." But yeah, so y'all probably do similar though to us though. You mm-hmm. kind of you you kind of you, you kind of assume nobody knows about it, so you kind of be, be a little stealthy, you know, be a little careful around things so that people don't wonder what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. With, with kids, it's always helpful. Kids and dogs, right, Jesse? The two things that'll keep people yeah. from asking you questions. A little bit of camouflage. The good camouflage, what you're doing. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Well, if you look yes. at websites like Sassy Mama and, and you look at things to do during weekend, geocaching uh, pops up once in a while. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, that's... Yeah. I think that it's... helps, like you yeah. said. I think that helps yeah. to, to, you know, at least... I always the way I always look at it is if if people will if people at least know about it then I'm then I'm okay with, I mean if whether they geocache or not that's up to them obviously but I just want people to realize what's what it is so that when they see me or somebody else geocaching they're not like you know think I'm doing something illegal or something you know something something nefarious yes. <laughs> I don't want them to so um but, I don't know um, if it's the same there. A lot here, well, there's articles just like you said. There's articles if you go to websites and cities talk about things to do. With here, it's a real popular thing with younger kids too. So a lot of schools will do it um, as like as a classroom and things like that. I don't know if, if, if you have the same experience. Um, and cities will promote it a lot here for something to just get outdoors and do. Is it is it popular among children over there as well? It is. I would say like some of, some of the families, they, they do it. They do it in the family. I have a friend called Tim. Uh, when his kids are younger, they always do it as a family when they first started. Okay. So that sounds like it's pretty similar. It's just about as popular as it is here. People know about it. It's not a completely hidden thing. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, like Singapore, when I first came back to Singapore, uh, over the weekend, there was a news a reporter who actually featured uh, me and my family doing geocaching over the weekend because it's the starting of the uh, a spring term break and and the kids has a one week holiday and and the news was featuring activities to to do as a family. So that makes sense. Yeah, okay. they, they pick geocaching as one of the, the the things to do. Right. Yeah. Um. So. You have traveled a lot, <laughs> yeah. um, which is great. And so I know people are always, at least I know we are, and I know a lot of our uh, viewers and listeners always love to hear the gr- the, the stories of people's uh, travels and their um, um finding caches in other parts of the world. So, and also that'll help the chat room as they want to ask questions. Um, but um, you have, you've been to some great locations to cache. I mean, you found, you found caches uh, that are very, they're very famous caches, but um, let's start with, let's just start with headquarters. What, when did you come to he- to headquarters and what was your experience coming to Seattle? Well, it was, a, it was an interesting uh, uh, experience, I would say. It was an interesting journey. Uh, my, it was in 2015, and uh, my daughter was born that year. So mm-hmm. I decided to take, uh, uh, take a gap year from work. And, and me and my wife actually uh, left. Uh, the kid with my with the in-laws and we took a, like a two months holiday around Europe and US and oh, at that cool. time we we knew about the block party and we thought that okay we, we, why not make use of this chance or, or this period of time to visit the HQ during the block party oh, cool. yeah yeah so we awesome. we flew in yeah we flew into to San Diego and we drove all the way from San Diego up to Seattle wow yeah cool so that's where we visited Silicon Valley, Disneyland, Anaheim, uh, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the blue plaque, and, and eventually end up at uh, the HQ itself. Right. Yeah. So that's HQ, nice of course, yeah, that's, a, that's an awesome trip. 
HQ, you know, is not well. What was your experience walking up to HQ? <laughs> it's different for me, I guess, because yeah, like, is this it or? But what, what was it like visiting the headquarters of geocaching? Uh, like a pyramid, pyramid, yeah, yeah. So, uh, it, it was very exciting. Uh, it's like finally I'm going to to get this cross out. Right. <laughs> one thing off the bucket list. <laughs> I mean, the, I mean, we parked the car somewhere nearby, not exactly at the HQ, but like along the way, we were seeing like, ah, oh, that guy's a Joe Casher, this guy's a Joe Casher. Yeah, everybody in town is a Joe Casher. <laughs> That's funny. Now, you did? Did you do all of the Geo Tour, or did you do? Because you found quite a few on the Geo Tour. I didn't know if you did the whole, the whole tour or not. I there was not a lot of geo tour at that time. Uh, we did oh. everything that was possible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, yeah. And then on that, that was, Oh, we have a question. What are the biggest differences be between do biggest differences geocaching between the U S and Asia? Yeah. That was on our list. Jinxer, but we'll ask it now. Hide styles, density, quality so does anything stand out to you as far as when you from all the caches you found in the u.s you found quite a few versus over in in, in actually i was going to ask we'll combine that in that what is different between u.s and asia we'll start with that one right so I guess that the the land area uh, dictates uh, the type of caches you can hide. So in, in, right. in Asia, it's not just one country; it's many, many countries. And sure, uh, sure. And in, in, even in countries like Hong Kong and in Singapore, it's everywhere is ever changing. Uh, right. Hong Kong, and, Hong Kong, and Singapore is a city state. Uh, there are developments everywhere. Um, in the city itself, you don't find a lot of big caches. You still find a lot of nano that are right. pocket caches or or main containers. Um, right. Yeah. So and and Singapore is a very well kept uh, country. So maintenance are done every day. Uh, it's, it's very clean. So sometimes caches don't uh, stay that long, not because of muggles, but it's just uh, they're, they're they're cleaners who are who are, who, are, who who likes to excel in their work. Right. <laughs> yeah. So they're cleaned up by, by city workers. Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, like I said, the, the city is, is always changing. We, we literally have a, we literally see one of the heights take being taken away from us. So uh, there was one time we were in, in Hong Kong, there was a cache that's hidden under the bench. And very coincidentally, after we take the cache, when we were signing, right. uh, there were city workers who came in and then took the bench away and replaced with a new one. That's not oh Manhattan. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So, um, I mean, is that uh, the ones out on the trails? Are they a little bigger sometimes? Yeah, the, the ones on the trail are a little, a little bigger and, it's t and they tend to stay there a little bit longer. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the ones uh, in the city disappear a lot of times. That's, that's, Unfortunate. Do people generally put them back, or do they just not put them back? Well, it depends on the the CO. If it's a good location, people would would do roll downs and try to keep the cash alive. Right. Okay. Sound familiar? Yeah. Jesse? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That happens here too. That's just the same as here, obviously. But um, yeah. What is uh? So nanos are pretty common. Is there other? So we always joke here, and I'm sure you found one of these yourself. But um, the big joke here is one of the most common types of hides is in, in a lamp post. You know where it lifts up, and you know there's a little space under it, a uh, lamppost cache. Yes, is that yeah, a, do you have those there yeah. too, or just here? No, we don't. The lampposts uh, don't have skirts in Asia. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. so that's one big difference. <laughs> oh darn! It, it already came up in the chat room, so I had to ask it. But uh, there goes half our caches in the U.S. No, I'm kidding. I don't know how many. We've never figured. We'd love to find out how many caches we've. But we find we've just all just about every parking lot you go in here though has got one. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's my experience too. Every parking lot, every yeah. parking lot. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah, 
as Kyle's, I was wondering about, go ahead, Jesse, you had a question. Yeah. So the other part of that question was uh, like for density. So how, I mean, is there just a lot in the cities or are more of them outside of the cities or more of them in the city? Talking about Singapore or some other yeah, city? Yeah, any, anywhere, any, you know, any of those places that you're wherever you're currently living. Losing so in, in, yeah. in Singapore and in Hong Kong, uh, we don't uh, we don't have long highways where you can put like a thousand uh, mm -hmm. right uh, caches along the way. But recently in in Hong Kong, like Tim, uh, he recently put uh, a power trail on the longest road in 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 Hong Kong. It's called the Castle Peak oh. Road, and there are, there are like cool. hundred and eighty eight uh, caches along this road. So wow. I I did. 30 of them, but uh, there's, there's a few of them in Hong Kong who actually completed who completed the whole trail uh, in, in, in two to three days' time. Wow. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, if I can, let me bring up a map. Uh, if it's okay with Conrad, I'm going to bring up his map of his finds because I think it's <clears throat> fascinating. Um, so... There's a, um, a map of some of the ones you found. Um, several, several countries. Yeah. 15 of 53 county countries logged. That's just in Asia. He's got Europe, 14 of 55 countries in Europe. Wow. Yes. Do you know how many countries you geocached in? I've not kept track, but probably 30. U.S. and Canada found a couple in, in uh, got one Australia, eight New Zealand. We have a lot of Australian and New Zealand, New Zealand, uh, New Zealanders fans. Yeah, New Zealanders and Aussies. We have we have a lot of fans in those countries, and we appreciate them a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's Hong Kong. This is interesting. How you know it's it's kind of fascinating. You you went. You're moving from Hong Kong to Singapore, and really, Hong Kong and Singapore are like two of the most unique places, you know, in Asia because they're, you know, just so rich in history, but so different. You know, they're, you know, like you said, because Singapore being a city state, you know, it's just this kind of interesting, both are have incredible history, but. Uh, anyway, and then see, he's got got some U.S. There's C Singapore right there. They've got it broken down into five regions. Yes, I'm surprised yeah. because Singapore is really small. Right, <laughs> they have five regions. You're kind of like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Why geocaching decided to break it out into five regions? I mean, you don't you don't reckon? You mean you don't you don't think about that during the day that you're going from one region to another? I mean. Probably. No, we right. don't. Yes, we don't. Right. I didn't think you probably did. But hey, you found congratulations. You found a cash doll five. So That's right. There you go. <laughs> Got some from the UK. It's awesome. Japan. Um South Korea. I mean, you just you've been able to cash around the world. Uh China. What um I don't know where to start. Portugal. Italy, it goes on and on. It goes in. That is quite a bit of traveling. Isle of Man, you found quite a few on Isle of Man. Well, if you're going to be there, right? You might as well find the caches if you're going to be there, right? Yeah. Uh, it's too bad Spain. couldn't reach the last region. I couldn't find any cache in the last region of the Isle. Of oh man! man. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but just the fact that you found them there, you know, yeah, is 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 something else to to you know. Found a few in Spain, Macau. That's interesting. Macau is another one of those kind of unique. You only have one region. You got five. But <laughs> Thailand, uh, Taiwan. Look, you almost completed Taiwan. Oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like leaves you leaves you a trip back. You can go back That's to Taiwan. Right. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Got one in Denmark, Iceland. Oh, definitely want to go to Iceland someday. Yes, so beautiful. Oh man, 
We have talked to many people that have been, but Gary and I have not been to go caching there anyway. We want to go, yes. Uh, France, I'm kind of the same thing with you, Conrad. I've been to France, just not when geocaching was... Yeah, I've been to France as well, too, just not geocaching. Around, (laughs) yeah. Sweden, the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of fans, a lot of fans of the... uh, Been there, no caching. Yeah, Malaysia. That's really cool. Um, two regions you found them both in Malaysia. What what is it? Well, I'll stop for a moment. So Malaysia, being being unique, you know, and the fact that you're you can kind of get to Malay. Or I, let me ask. Since Hong Kong is really right, Hong Kong is connected in a sense, right, to Malaysia. No, Singapore is connected to Malaysia. I mean, I'm, that's right. I'm sorry. I was thinking Singapore, and I said, yeah. Singapore is sort of connected. Do you Can you travel back and forth between Malaysia and Singapore without, I mean, he crossed the border, I guess you could say, without them saying anything, or do they do they ask you to well, well, there's passport? Still, there, yeah, there's still a border, and, uh, okay. and during the pandemic, it's, it's closed, but it's recently open. Uh, my wife was actually from Malaysia. She's from the, oh, the, okay. the, the state of uh, JB, that's the first state when you first cross the cross right. the causeway. We call it the causeway, right. and uh, we used to, before we moved to Hong Kong, we used to do it very often. Like every other weekend, we will visit. We will cross. We will cross the the causeway and spend the week weekend in Malaysia. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hopefully, it'll get more open as time goes on. You know, we get further further away from the the major part of the, the pandemic. So. Yeah. Yep. Canada, British Columbia, or, um, yeah, Canada, Switzerland, Indonesia, Cambodia. You've been all over the world. You man, you have South Island, New Zealand, Vatican city, which is fascinating that, you know, I guess if you're going to be in that area, got to grab a cash, right? You're, you have to, right? You, you have, have to, to. You're right there, and it's it's another it's country. It's country, another country. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're there. You might yeah. as well get another country. Well, and I think there's currently like five or seven geocaches in Vatican City, so you can actually clear out the whole country if you have time. <laughs> you can <laughs> finish caching country. all the caches in a country. Yeah, I found the whole country. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the Maldives. Yeah. Now this is weird map. This is on Project GC. We're looking at for the for our audio listeners. How crazy of a map is this thing? Um, they have 21 regions. Can you just clear out the Maldives? Wow. Yeah, because it's all islands. Yeah, but yeah, you have to do some serious islands. Well, you couldn't do it in a day, I guess, unless you, you yeah. know. 21 regions, that's, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Belgium, Vietnam. We'll come back to any of the, I'm sure there's some chat room questions. I'm just, I'm just fascinated by this. Poland, the Philippines, Qatar or Qatar, depending on what part of the world. The biggest in. questions that are coming up in the chat room, I think we're going to get to anyway. It's about uh, events and local cashers knowing each other. Oh, okay. So we're going to kind of get to that in a bit. I'll get away from this. I just, I got. Gary's fascinated with your map. He's just jealous. I got mesmerized because it's just amazing. Just, that's wonderful the travel you've done, Conrad. But, uh, um, yeah, uh, Cash the Line got excited when I mentioned Iceland. He's a big Iceland fan as well. So um, that'll be a future geocache talk trip. We'll all meet. In oh Iceland. gosh, yes, <laughs> we, we definitely. Yes, I say it's it's, that, it's so fascinating. It's like it's like a big geography lesson, right? <laughs> yeah, I've I've heard it referred to as fire and ice. Do you remember? Did you get to see any? I know there wasn't probably any. I mean, volcanic, volcan, volcan, volcanic activity, volcanoes in Iceland, obviously are like, well, it's like Hawaii. It's like other parts of the world. It sometimes there's volcano activity, volcanic activity. Sometimes there isn't. Do you remember your traveling around Iceland? Do you remember seeing anything, or probably you just knew about it, but you didn't know. I mean, I don't think there was anything. Was there anything active at the time, or? That's not. That's nothing active at the time. But we vi- we did visit a cater. Okay, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. we visited a, the, the the geyser. Oh so yeah, cool. 
Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Those are always fascinating. I love the, the geology, the finding earth caches, earth caches in Iceland are supposed to be oh, pretty yeah. good earth caches. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, all right. Sorry. Get back to my notes. Cause I was way off track here. Um, so tell, tell us a little bit more. I know you, um, when you went to Hong Kong, you tra- you know, moved to Hong Kong, and you, you, and you got into geocaching, um, and you, y'all didn't really know a whole lot of people, but you were able to sort of connect with uh, people there that do geocache. So tell, pe- tell people a little bit about your experience with uh, the geocachers in Hong Kong. Right, so when we started geocaching and we started uh, having problems on, on on finding caches and my wife said oh that's a that's a Facebook group in 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 Hong Kong and said and suggested that we should like ask somebody in that group and and I'd like to especially mention this guy called King Lee. He's one of my geocaching buddies. He's, he's also right. a Singaporean and he's also back in Singapore. He moved back a oh, few wow. years uh, two years earlier than than us. And we reached we reached out to him on on Facebook. He's he's, he's very responsive. He gives a lot of him, and and what and he contributes a lot uh, to the, the community in, in Hong Kong, oh, where he great. actually like uh, organize hikes uh, every week or every other week to bring uh, amateurs like myself then to to go on to go on hikes to explore the track the trails and tracks in Hong Kong and and to find geocaches. Uh, uh, oh, wow. in the mountains or no, yeah so from there from there we i remember the first uh gathering uh, or the first uh, weekend track was to visit kowloon peak that's where i started to meet um uh, the, the, the 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 regulars there like there, there's right. aq that's vistalia they're all very friendly and very helpful that's uh, cool that's awesome yeah, yeah so did, did did were there did you guys get together like once a month or was it just sort of periodically would you have like events would you have geocaching events or yeah we, we do we, uh at that time uh, we, uh we try to go on 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 hikes every week okay. so uh there'll, there'll be there'll be people who who place uh uh new caches along trails like on different trails every week and and when they pops up then uh kingly will say okay let's go to this this track this weekend right yeah i don't know if you what know about other you... types of just meet and greet events did you have many of those uh i, I would not say has regular as we wanted to uh but we we do we 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 do like uh, try to organize uh uh hikings together that's not at not official joe cash events okay oh, okay yeah um, or, I don't know if this this is. Are you familiar with this person? I don't know they're at. They say, "Hey, Connor is Patrick." Yeah. Cool. He's, Somebody he's you a know. regular of the yeah. He's a regular of the geocaching community. He, he he contributes a lot. He's he's one of the the scouts guy I was saying talking about. Uh, oh, cool. He he yeah. He's he's actively spreading the words uh to new members of his community cool. of his own scouts community and yeah uh, he he hides a lot of caches uh in in the northwest area of hong kong oh okay great well welcome patrick i saw that i thought maybe you knew somebody go ahead go ahead jesse <clears throat> so somebody has asked uh hopefully this i don't think this is on our list already for the questions but um obviously we focus a lot on gadget caches on some of our podcasts here um do you have many gadget caches in hong kong or singapore Not not in Singapore. I've seen. Uh, I've been here not too long to see any. I don't remember any gadget caches. But there was a right. reg. There was a regular cacher called CX15. So he builds a lot of um, uh, gadget caches uh, when he's uh, uh, when he's more active back in Hong Kong. So uh, his his his. Uh, so one of the things he did was a, a snake game a snake game cache. And that okay. was actually featured in the uh, Joe Cash of the Week, where you go to the GZ, you have to play a snake game. 
Oh, okay. Uh, and when you when you cool. get a certain score, it will bring you to a location where you find the key and 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 the coordinate to the actual catch itself. Wow. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and one of his more famous uh, series is actually called the Five Senses, where each each of them where you have to use your sight, smell, or touch to to locate the the catch. Oh, okay. That's very yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was featured on YouTube as well. So if you if you Google or if you go to YouTube and search like five senses Hong Kong, you see uh, the video of the five cent cash. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Yeah, that is awesome. Um, so, um, what 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 is when you think back on um, your favorite geocaching experiences? Um, you, you put one, put one of the, a note in about, about one that you did, uh, and was wondering what it was like to do it, the, the hiking Mount Fuji. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, it, it, it was, the, it, it was memorable because it was the first, uh, uh, trip outside Hong Kong. We, 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 we organized. So, um, so we planned to climb Mount Fuji at that time as well, like, uh, find Joe Cashers uh, along this road trip. So right. me, King Lee, and Corina, I and mean, my wife, we we flew to Osaka, hired a car, drove to Mount Fuji, and along the way, just picking up uh, some of the nicer caches we thought. Right. That's very cool. Yeah, and that's that's actually how we got it started on traveling and geocaching. Uh, uh, uh has a fusion right so a lot of these trips you've taken are they do you plan the trip to go geocaching or are you plan the trip for another reason and you go geocaching while you're on the trip well i, I guess that when we when we plan the trip like geocaching is always one of the main itinerary or agenda uh and geocaching will give us an idea where to go or what what to visit or where to visit okay right yeah kind of like yeah we we do similar things i mean i think both jesse and i will do that we plan around geocaching and then we might go somewhere and also look for geocaches yeah. or kind of like, both whether you're going on a family vacation kind of, yeah. or just kind of both traveling for work or whatever else you're you're going to geocache while you're there for sure that's right yeah um so i do have this video if we if we can show it uh about your you going? Uh, you're planning for ET Highway. Is that okay? Can we show it? Yeah, go ahead. Did you sent me. Okay, let me bring this up, and uh, you can kind of maybe we can talk through it a little bit as we as we uh, we show this. So let me uh, switch gears here. There we go. Which is another I'll big trip us, in the U.S. I'll put us at the bottom. So maybe that works. Maybe yeah. I don't know what's better. I don't know. Yeah, so we'll, this, we'll, this, is the, this is this video is a five cents video from CX15. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Yeah. We'll put some. So the, the that way. yeah mm -hmm. the, the ET highway is, is the, the the link above. Oh, is this? The, oh, this is the five senses. Well, let's do the let's. Can we start with this one? Yeah, I can. So okay. this lady so we is just called about. Yu, Yu, yeah Yuki. So she's uh she yeah. used to be a regular jewel cashier in Hong Kong. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we were just talking about the five senses one, so let's let's go let's do this one. This would be kind of fun. <laughs> so just open an electrical box. Yeah, right. It's a fake electrical oh. box. Yeah, oh, yeah, fake okay. electrical. There's a waterproof box. case inside it. So where is this one? So this this one is near Sai. It's a near a place called Sai Kong. Sai Kong is like a geo park. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, this is this like the smell one of the five senses. Yeah, the smell. Yeah. Oh, okay. The four containers inside it. And it's got uh, A, B, C, and D. And I'm, I'm guessing those uh, have oh. different smells to them. Yeah. 
<laughs> not give it away. <laughs> that is interesting. This one is. Uh, uh, so are all. Is he pretty good about putting them all in like really con- like containers that are like secure kind of thing? Is he the hider is really good about? Yeah, the hider is really good. Uh, it's, it's extremely, making sure they're they're yeah. hidden well. Yeah, yeah, or, hidden well and almost unmuggable. Right. Yeah, that, those are the best when you can the guy can keep it so that the muggles can't can't get to him. So yeah, that's extremely creative. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Uh you know, just the we always love it when we find caches that are that are well not only well well hidden, well done and well hidden, I guess is the way to put it. And that's yeah. that's an extremely creative cache too, which brings up a question. Um, with when caches like that are that elaborate out there, do you have trouble with people muggling those caches, like people tearing them up or or stealing them or anything like that? Is that a common problem? Not really. I think if if uh, the hider put in a lot of effort uh, to make sure that it's it's well secured. Um, People in Hong Kong, they don't tend to de- de- don't tend to vandal them. Right, that's yeah. good. They just kind of do their own thing and not not bother people. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. It depends on yeah, where you are it. here. I mean, obviously, yeah, big country. Here. There's different places all over it, but certain areas they they tend to to vandalize them more. Certain areas they'll leave them alone. I guess it's just, it's different throughout the country. Yeah. Yeah I, yeah, I think it's an Asian mentality. I'm not not trying to stereotype, it, but we tend to mind our own business. Mm. Right, that's yeah. good. That is good. That makes it much much better. Right. Uh, there was a question about it goes back to events, but when you had when there are events in either well, you just came from Hong Kong, so when you were in Hong Kong, were most of the events Owen's asking about if most of the events are local event people that are local that host them or are they people that like travel to hong kong and want to do an event just to kind of meet people it's, it's a mix actually so okay um we, we do get more uh, events from from tourists because um, the local geocachers we we already uh, yeah. meet up regularly and we don't do we tend not to do official events unless that's a uh, that's a requirement from uh, HQ to do an event. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah it yeah, makes but sense. Events, events from tourists are very well received. Uh, we, we we always like to to meet new people, understand where they're from. In fact, the reason why I go to our man is is actually from from one of the geocacher. Uh, with who was a tourist and on a business trip and she told me about this little place called Isle of Man. And that's, that's right. the first time I heard of this country. And yeah. uh, when I visited Manchester in, in a few years ago, I thought uh, I have a break uh, doing my, my work and I thought I could I could go Ireland or I could visit somewhere new. So right. I chose Isle of Man. Isle of Man. That's crazy. Yeah. Might as yeah. well, right? That's just yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Um, so uh, you've got you've you've hidden uh, quite a few. Mm-hmm. Um, you seem to be a you, you're you've hidden a lot of uh, mystery caches. Is that right? I mean, you've done you've done quite a few mystery caches, right? Yeah, done a okay. few. He done a few as well. I yeah. did a jewel art of of, of a hut in in Hong Kong. Oh, of a hut. Oh, okay, shaped like a hut. Is it shape of a hut? Yeah. Oh, a heart. Okay, got you. Yeah, yeah. got you. Yeah. Got you. That's kind of cool. I mean, when they're shaped, kind of interesting. Kind of. I mean, doesn't. I, I've I've told people that are not geocachers. Uh, I've tried to explain it to people, and it's like, 
wait, did you go around like, well, no, it's a heart on the map, but where was it? Was it, was it an actual, because once there's, there are some GR where they literally are at the locations, but typically they're just along a long, long road or something. And then when you, when you get them all, it fills in the whole heart. Was it, was it a mystery cache one or? Yeah, it's mystery cache. So was it yeah. okay? So the, cool. Yeah, the 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 the, the geo art was actually uh, loc uh, published in in the middle of the in the middle of the sea, so the actual oh, wow. locations are are sort of like related to right. to the cache itself. So the theme of the geo art are, are storybooks, and uh, the final locations is actually sort of related to the book the the, oh. the books itself. Okay. Oh, that's cool. It looks like you've hidden a little bit of everything. You've done traditionals and a virtual and some events and a CEDO event. Yeah. You've 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 hidden pretty much everything. Yeah, I tried to. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Now uh, somebody did ask, are you a and I think you've already mentioned your cell phone earlier, but are you a cell phone cacher and it, it or do you use a GPS? And if, if you're a cell phone cacher, which do you have the same app as you use Cashly or which which app do you use? I'm a cell phone cashier. Uh, so initially, where the when the app wasn't that great, uh, right. we used a GPS. But slowly, as the app uh, got better, I, I just yes. started relying on on the GeoCache app itself. So uh, in, in the beginning, I tried to use GPS, OpenStreet app, and and GeoCaching app. Right. But right now, I just rely on on the GeoCaching app on the Android. Okay. okay. GeoCaching app on Android. Yeah. Android, but yeah, but yeah. cell phone. He's just you know, he's uh, he's part of the family there, Jesse. Between you, you and I, I mean, that's that's the yeah, only way to go. Cell, cell phone for me too. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't use the GPS. I use the cell phone. It's worked everywhere I've ever been. So, yeah. yeah. So we have a very split audience, which is fine. But uh, right. all of the uh, all the Android fans are now screaming. They're going crazy for you, Conrad. <laughs> yeah. we still love you too man we we, we use uh jesse and i use iphone but uh we love all our android uh users because we know it's hard we know it's very difficult we know the struggles that you have to use an android no i'm, I'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> i'm playing so no it's yeah. that's cool but yeah uh i actually started with a gps but yeah i don't it's a museum piece is the way we look at them. They're kind of cool to look at because they're old. And I guess there's people that do, that do still use them, but no, oh, yeah. People still use them all the time. I just, <laughs> I don't. Right. Direwolf yeah, says he can, I, I, can now give a thumbs I, up I, to the show. I, I guess the uh, official app is enough to get me to where GZAC is. And I rely on intuition and, and the sure. description and the hints to, to, to find the, uh, the, uh, the geocache itself. Sure. Yeah. It wouldn't be fun if it told you exactly where it was. It wouldn't be hard to find it then. You want to still have some fun with it. What's the point, right? Well, since you have traveled to, to so many countries and cached, what, what did you, what are some of the tricks and tips that you would give people when they travel somewhere and you don't know the language, you, you kind of have to use other may you know methods pardon me what are, what are some things that you tend to do when you're in a foreign country that you're like i don't speak the language but i want to find a cash does something come to mind well I, yeah I, I think like every country is different uh research sure. is definitely uh important uh when you go to places like italy where like most of the most of the description are in Italian instead of English. Um, I think it helps to go for uh, the, sim the, the simplest one, the sure. one that's like regularly fine to understand like uh, what the caches might might look like. Right. Uh, when you tr when you when you even try to attempt the, the harder ones. Uh, right. It, it, yeah, and it helps to to know people who live in the country. So. Uh, I think, it, like I said, like research does help. So when you read the logs, you will know that uh, who are the regular geocachers and and, and uh, if you need help, like who are the ones that 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 you could reach out to. Yeah, and, and, 
for sure. Some of your travels too, it, it obviously varies, but for some people when they travel and some of the times you've probably traveled, you might not have a lot of time. So you're right. You try to find, you always want to find a cache in that country. So you want to find one quick versus if you have more time, you can kind of, you know, maybe find and spend more time trying to, you know, translate whatever you're looking for or you need looking at a geocaching description and you want to translate it versus finding something quick, you know, cause you just need to find one quick before you get back on the plane or whatever. Yeah. I think most yeah. important is don't be too hard on, on ourselves. Like, you know, we, we can't find all the geocache in the world. And, and when you go to a new country, you should, uh, we shouldn't be hard on DNF you know, as long as like we find one or two, we should be satisfied. And, and like geocaching is, is, it's not the only objective of the travel. Right. Right. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. It's definitely good to get geocaches anytime you go to a new place, but you don't want to focus on geocaching so much that you miss out on the travel and visiting the place itself for everything else that's there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so now that you're back, now that you're back home in, in Singapore and well, you got a lot, you got a lot to do. Uh, I know that, uh, uh, the house is still Conrad showed us the house uh, picture. Uh, he, he sent me a photo of it, but recently or before we started the show, he showed me his, his, his living room, which is full of boxes. <laughs> so uh, that uh, w- once you get kind of settled, do you have any plans to, as far as caches do you want are you all do you all want are you all wanting to go go somewhere to do some geocaching or like do y'all want to try to get you know since your wife's from malaysia are y'all want to go get back into malaysia for a little bit and look around or what do you have any thoughts about where you'd like to go to do some more geocaching other than yes in, oh, I was just, so in, in in the past two years there's definitely a lot of geocache new geocaches that pop up in, in singapore oh, yeah. Get all yeah, and um, yeah. there are some trails, there are some power trails, and uh, oh, cool. I'd like to get myself on the on the bicycle and to, to try to get as many as possible. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, since it is the year of the hide for geocaching, do you have plans to hide some more geocaches? Well, uh, I have. Uh, I've been recently awarded my fourth Adventure Lab credit. So, oh, very cool. um, the, the, the neighborhood I'm I'm staying at is pretty low pretty lonely in terms of caches so i'm going to like do a venture lab around the neighborhood and probably hide a bonus one somewhere near my oh, house cool. oh neat neat very cool is, yeah is that your favorite type of cache to hide or what is your favorite type of cache to hide um uh, i think interesting places is more important than the hide itself okay sure. yeah okay. take taking somebody to a spot Right. Yeah, taking somebody. Yeah. yeah. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. We have people who well, we have we have all kinds that that listen and, and watch. We have some people we've talked to they're they're more interested, or their their focus is like gadgets and and things like that. Not that a gadget can't take you to a cool place, but that's kind of their their forte and their their spot versus like you're saying there's people that are like oh this is a great place i want to see if i can hide a cash here because this is a place to go you know so mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of a mix jesse moving to you know wherever he's going to go uh will be interesting because you get to get to do like like he said you can kind of explore new areas and yeah. Anytime you move to a new area, you have a whole bunch of new geocaches to go find. <laughs> so that's always a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Con- and Conrad's been gone long, so it's like there's a whole whole new set to find. It's like getting to start all yes. over. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It is. So uh, I mean one of is... one of the one of the experience I, I enjoy about geocaching uh-huh. is because sometimes when you look at the map, you wouldn't know about the area and and I like surprises where, like, when you go to this place and, and realize that, oh, this is such a 
interesting right. place. Like you, you, you start to look around and you want to explore the place more than you find the joke, more than finding the joke cache. So, yeah, that's yeah, that that's is exactly true. what I was going to ask you next. What is your favorite part, or what? What is your favorite part of geocaching? I'm guessing finding new places is is kind of what you just just kind of mentioned. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that's really cool. They I would have to agree with you. I haven't traveled to any extent uh, the amount you have. Uh, I've traveled around my own country and I've been to a couple other countries, but um, travel is definitely my favorite part. Well, really, I guess there's kind of two. I'm, I'm always split. Travel is one part, just like you do, and then. Um, we're pretty lucky to have events a lot here. So getting to meet other geocachers is always, I guess the other part of it that I like just as much as travel. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, so oh, kind you of, yeah. Udak is asks about, have there been mega events that you've been to or, or there have they been some in Asia? There are, but have you been doing megas? I don't think so. Yeah, I've been to a few mega events, but I have not seen one in Asia. Uh, I think it, the number of people to have a mega event, uh, we, right. we, don't have the, we, we don't have the type of numbers in, in, right. in a single country. Right. Yeah. Be cool to, to you know, see one you know, or have one, you know, in your area. It'd be cool. Um, a lot of people in one place. Yeah, it is. It's a lot. It's a lot. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, so I guess sure. I guess the difficult part is like Asia is made out of many different countries, and yeah. if you want to uh, Huge. do a mega, yeah. you need to have enough people flying in from lots of different places, and right, and uh, the the challenge is the time, and people speak different languages. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's very true. Do you? Do, I, I guess it's like in the U.S. or or I should say, let me in non-speaking, non-English speaking countries, that it's a mix. I would assume you've experienced this, where some people speak English, some people don't. It's just a mix of, you know, I I don't know. Is what is the main? What would you say the main language that is spoken in? Singapore, what is what is the main language? Do you think? In Singapore, it's English. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but being sort of an international city, I guess you you'll hear, you might hear other languages as well, but mostly mostly it's all English. So okay. Yes. Uh, like the the uh, the subjects in school are taught in English, uh, so English will be the primary primary form of of, of communication okay. here. Gotcha. And then, but Hong Kong, was it kind of more, was that being also an inter international type city? Did you hear a lot of, in, did you hear, was there a lot of, of like, what, what yeah. languages do you feel like were mostly spoken in Hong Kong? It depends on the, the people you, you meet. Uh, right. A lot of them speak Cantonese. Uh, okay. Well, and, and there's a lot of expat in, in Hong Kong and they, they will speak English. Okay. So, so I guess the real is. question for our audience is in Hong Kong and Singapore, what languages are the caches hidden in? Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll say like mostly it's English. That's what mostly I mean. English. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the geocachers in Hong the geocachers in Hong Kong are pretty friendly. Uh, they, they will, they will put their caches in, in English and okay. it is to facilitate uh, people who don't understand or can't read Chinese. Oh, okay. okay. Right. Right. Yeah. I've seen it in some places though. And America's not real good about this. All of ours are in English all the time. It seems yeah. like, but, and a lot of places around the, around the world, we've seen caches, they'll have multiple languages on the page. The most common languages, right. if there's two or three common languages in an area, they will put all of those on the geocache page, um, which is, it's gotta be really convenient for people traveling through because you're, hopefully you'll speak one of the languages on there. <laughs> right you know yep. if, if not you just you, you're out of luck so you're out of luck <laughs> although most yes. of the apps will trans you can translate things you know with google and apps and everything pretty easily nowadays it may not be perfect but it you'll still right. get to where you need to get yeah 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 you, you 
you know, like we're saying, you, you just want, it doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as you can get the information you need to hopefully find the cash that you need, you know, this would be you know, pretty cool. Yeah. And yeah. Out of all the places you've traveled, and this may be a hard question because you've been to so many places, do you have a favorite country that you geocached in? Yes, actually, Iceland is my favorite country to, to geocache in. Well, there you because, go. Uh, it's, 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 so, it's a beautiful place. The geology is fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Dave was wondering, uh, he, I don't know, is there is there one reviewer that you, their name seems to show up all the time for Singapore or is like, I wonder if the reviewer for Singapore covers like a whole area, you think? I, 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 if you I know can't remember, is. but the, the, yeah. the reviewer for Hong Kong is like Proti Robot. Okay. Yes. So you're familiar with that one, but you're not sure about Singapore, maybe? Yeah, yeah not yet. Not mm. yet. He's just getting, getting, getting his feet wet back there, Houston, Texas, Dave. He's not, he's not unpacked yet. <laughs> he's still, he's still got boxes to, to get through, but, uh, well, cool. Well, um, I guess let's kind of go around the room. We'll do some final thoughts. If there's any last, last questions anybody wants to ask, um, you know, put them in the chat room, uh, but, uh, get the last questions out of there. So Conrad, I do have a question for you and it's, this may be a hard one to answer or whatever, but we kind of talked about your favorite place to geocache. And you mentioned Iceland, which um, is uh, – I've never heard anybody that went to Iceland that didn't just love geocaching Iceland. Everybody says Iceland's just just beautiful, and I'm super jealous for all the travel you've done. <laughs> um, and I would say that in general, most of the geocachers I've met from any part of the world are generally all friendly. Have you noticed a difference in geocachers that you've met in different countries? I, I guess so. I, I think like uh, different play, different people play the game differently, and yeah. and and uh, some of them do expect uh, you to follow their kind of doctrine. Oh, okay. But I, I, yeah, but I just like uh, I keep the game to myself as I, as long as I don't disturb anyone, don't break any laws. Uh, sure. I think that's most important to me. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part, have you had good experiences just finding that you run, run across a geocacher in another country? There, it seems like that we've ex our experiences have always been that most geocachers are are pretty friendly and are are just excited to be out geocaching. Usually, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that that's, that's what I thought about geocachers uh, around the world as well. Most of them are very friendly and right. very helpful. Yeah. Uh, I think geocaching is kind of one of those right. universal things, right? Yeah. Just like Gary said, people are friendly, and it, there's different people everywhere, right? We all know that there's certain people that are just never going to be friendly. But overall, right. most geocachers I've met from any part of the world are just super friendly, and they're happy, and they're they're willing to work with you. And you know, it's um, it's it's one of those rare things where most of the people in this game are super nice. Yep. Yeah, very, very true. Yep. Well, um, I guess I'll, I'll kind of go first with final thoughts uh, again, Conrad. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. being with us tonight um, and morning for you. Uh, but um, it's been great, uh, you know, to be able to get uh, a, a glimpse into another part of the world, you know, and so that's it's been great uh, to 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 correspond with you back and forth and hopefully we can do this again sometime and uh i'll turn over to you uh jesse if you want to yeah i, I want to say the same thing thank you for being on we really appreciate it it's interesting to find out how things are different but they're really also the same with geocaching around the world um we, we are lucky enough to get to talk to people around the world and even though like lamppost caches we always joke about here are a universal thing here you don't have them over there. Um, we always joke about those, but, um, <laughs> it, you know, caching is a little bit different in the styles everywhere, but it, just like you said, you, you kind of do your thing, have fun. As long as you're following the laws, you can pretty much have fun anywhere you go geocaching. And I, I think it's, it's pretty neat to find out that 
there's a lot of similarities around the world. It, geocachers are geocachers, no matter what country you come from. And we can all kind of get along and agree we're just out there to have fun. So I, I really thank you for coming on. It, it gives us a good perspective and our audience a good perspective that not all of us are as fortunate enough to get to travel as much as you have. And we all love it. And I hope you get to keep traveling that much for as long as you want to. Yeah. Right. You're welcome. And thank you for having me. Yeah. Great to meet you guys. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much again. And yeah, uh, take care and uh, we'll let you go. And again, thanks everybody for, for the show tonight and uh, we'll see you guys uh, next week is puzzle talk. So mm -hmm. be ready for puzzle talk next week. Well, actually Tuesday, of course is gadget talk. So we'll see everybody on Tuesday night. And again, thanks so much and we'll see you again. Good night, everybody. <laughs>hope you've enjoyed the show tonight please email us your comment at geocache talk at gmail.com don't forget to follow us on twitter instagram and facebook the show can be found on apple podcasts stitcher radio public or spotify as well as at the geocache talk website don't forget to click that subscribe button below and ring that bell notification so that you can see and hear the show on a weekly basis and tell your friends about the show get them involved with us in the chat room and until next week don't just talk about geocaching go geocaching